Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Eric Eldridge. I'm the Director of Marketing for Dale Pro Audio in New York, New York. And we're very excited to be partnering up with Sure to show you the new ADX 5D Axiant Digital uh, in-camera receiver. So this is just being announced this morning. And we are very happy to have Ben Escobedo here from Sure to take us on a tour of it. So Ben, without further ado, let's see what this is about. Hey Eric, uh, thanks for joining us everyone. Uh, glad to be here, really excited. New product, uh, new Axiom Digital product. So without further ado, uh, here it is. Uh, you saw the teaser video and I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So uh, anything that comes to your mind, please put it in the chat and we'll try to answer it. But right here is the ADX 5D. Um, this dual slot in camera style receiver uh, is what you'd expect. It's a dual channel, Axiom Digital compatible, um, digital. <laughs> Did I say digital? Receiver. Uh, it has three different backplate options. So you can have the DB25, uh, the DB15, or the TA3 uh, mini XLR, uh, and you can uh, see it there on the screen. Uh, basically, if you're going to be running it into like a super slot compatible device, you can use a DB25. Uh, certain cameras use the DB15. And then of course we have the, uh, the TA3 backplate if you're using it in a bag uh, location, episodic filming type of deal, or even uh, with a cheese plate on top of a camera uh, with a little XLR to full-size XLR or a mini XLR to 3.5 millimeter. Um, but in a nutshell, what we did is we took our full blown Axiom digital dual channel receiver and uh, we shrunk it down to this tiny form factor. Uh, in addition, we added show link. So uh, right here, there's a show link antenna, and this uh, provides the show link remote control to show link compatible devices. If you're not familiar with show link technology, essentially it is Sure's name uh, for our remote control protocol. And that means that you can do a remote control things with transmitters. Um, if you put a transmitter on a talent or something, uh, you can actually remote control and change just about every parameter on it over the wireless show link network. Uh, this is on ADX uh, series transmitters. So for example, the micro body pack, which we have the ADX1M here, um, or any other ADX, ADX2, et cetera, uh, are showing compatible and allow you to make those changes remotely. A lot of people you know, are knowing the Axiom thing of like changing frequencies uh, when you get into trouble. Yes, it can do that kind of thing. Uh, but furthermore, it uh, allows you to just not worry about what the transmitter is doing. So uh, pretty, pretty cool. We're excited about it. Um, today, of course, we mentioned it's the first launch of the product and uh, we're really, really happy to kind of announce uh, this is rounding out the portfolio for, for those type of users. So uh, anyway, um, the ADX 5D itself is, like I said, very similar. If you're familiar with Axiom Digital or if you're not, um, it's super easy to use. Uh, we do have a very kind of minimalist uh, approach to setting it up and, of course, allowing you to concentrate on your work, your job, rather than uh, fiddling with menus and sync parameters and all that type of thing. Uh, I actually have a um, uh, ADX 5D here and uh, it's powered on, but... Uh, it's kind of in the sleep mode right now. I'll wake it up and you can see uh, it is full glory. You got your two antennas, your four buttons if you're used to Axiom Digital, uh, your show link antenna, of course, and it's got infrared sync and super wideband and you know, encryption, all the Axiom Digital features that you know and expect, uh, but from a really small compact unit. Um, to demonstrate some of the kind of cool functionality with show link, if you will, is that I'll take this uh, body pack I just showed you guys here and uh, I will sync it up to channel one. So on this menu, I will go in and uh, find channel one, sync, and I will sync it up here. And you can see that we do have audio uh, coming through because I have the tone generator on as well as the two blue lights in typical sure fashion let you know that you have a link there. And uh, you can see the antenna strength of each antenna and so forth. So, uh, you know, telling me that I have three hours and 39 minutes of battery left on this uh, particular transmitter battery. And uh, to demonstrate kind of one of the, the things about show link, which makes it so cool is that if I take the, uh, the receiver here and I go to channel one, and I go to the radio menu and I go to the frequency, it's at 499.175 right now. I will change that to something arbitrary like 505 and hit okay. And boom, as soon as I did that, 
Showlink took it and changed the frequency to the new frequency automatically. Um, so there is a link that's established there, which we call direct mode. The built-in show link that's in the transmit or the receiver here uh, will communicate with your two transmitters that are synced to the unit. And no matter what the receiver does, it'll change the transmitter. So uh, you can kind of think, for example, if you're on a job and you get there and you pull out the bag and uh, everything is ready to go, you do a frequency scan, uh, then you turn on your transmitters. As soon as you turn your transmitters on, they will remember that they were linked to that channel of that receiver and automatically go to the new frequency. Uh, you don't have to do that sync again like I just did. We, we all, we're all used to the infrared sync and it's great, but uh, it just automatically will change that new frequency, which is, which is pretty cool. So, um, you know, that is the direct mode of the show link. Uh, there's also a network mode. So if you're familiar with wireless workbench and you have an existing Axiom digital uh, rig, you can tie this product into a, another Axiom digital ecosystem. Uh, typically when we're talking of a full-blown Axiom digital uh, quad or dual setup with wireless workbench, you're using a uh, access point for show link like this AD610, which is, uh, you know, PoE ethernet powered and uh, is your full size uh, access point. If you have one of these in an existing setup, you can tie in this receiver with that using network mode, basically using wireless workbench to control everything. And therefore the receiver itself will pair with the access point and you have visibility and network control of all your devices. Uh, another cool thing is that it's uh, bi-directional. So if you're in network mode and everything is linked up together, uh, when I do a scan or a group scan on here uh, and hit deploy, it'll not just deploy on this, but across everything on the show link network. Uh, so that's uh, pretty, pretty powerful, if you will. You can kind of think of it two different ways, either direct if you're doing something locally, like in a bag or just on top of a camera, or you can do... Um, yeah, you can do network mode uh, for an existing Axiom digital ecosystem. Uh, some of the backstory of this product, and you know, a lot of people were talking about, you know, when are you going to come out with a portable receiver? And you all know we've been doing, sure has been doing, uh, you know, portable audio for a long time, the FP series mixers back in the day, and the UR5, and and so forth. Um, this was kind of the uh, the last piece of the puzzle, but um, it was really surprising to me and a lot of the the folks on the staff on the staff here that. Uh, Axiom Digital was actually being used in some of the class, the highest films that are, you know, up for awards uh, right now. And uh, the Axiom Digital is known for its great sound quality and ease of use. And we saw a lot of location sound recorders, uh, you know, using either uh, kind of a rack setup with a DC powered or, um, and uh, what they would do is they would take our Axiom Digital Quad or dual uh, receiver and uh, because it has the dual powering AC and DC, which typically is redundant for broadcast use, et cetera, they were just using it with the DC and uh, bringing it out to the field and recording these like top level films. Uh, it's like pretty amazing. And we were like blown away. Like you're using our rack stuff for your film, like kind of portable use. And Yes, uh, they were. So uh, needless to say, uh, we have a lot of users that are at the top level right now, extremely excited about this product because essentially we've taken all the good stuff from uh, the dual and shrunk it down into this tiny little package here. So whether you're using it into a camera directly or a super slot compatible device or a recorder or something like that, you can use this device and it pretty much is seamless, so. Pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna see here if we have some questions in the chat. Um, please put them in there, and we will uh, we will address them as they as they come up. I don't see any quite yet, but uh, it's still early, of course. So. Okay, that's no problem. Um, you see any questions, Eric, or do you have any questions? Um, yeah, um, we got a we got a few here. Um, you know, my colleagues um, who have had a little bit of uh, advance notice of some of this um, came up with some questions about how um, you spoke early on about the compatibility of you know either Sony style or Super Slot style cameras, or if you want to go with the external power and use the TA threes, but. Um, what about some of the third-party chassis that might be out there? Um, the, one of the examples we got was the uh, the SL2 from Sound Devices. Um, what's some of the third-party compatibility looking like? The third-party compatibilities are pretty pretty good. Um, in fact, most of the Super Slot DB25 compatible devices or slots or or whatnot are compatible with the ADX5D because it does follow the same 
DB25 principles and the spacing and everything like that. So, um, you know, it, it is, there are some outliers. Uh, we're working on a sheet that shows like some of the things that may be a little like weird. Like I think there's a, a I, I believe it's A10. Um, there's a certain pack where if you put the uh, the ADX 5D in there, it'll cover up an LED or something like that because it's, it's the footprint's a little larger and so forth. But for the most part, if you're used to sliding it into whatever super slot, this device with the appropriate DB25 backplate will physically fit in and, and work. No problem. Um, there was another question that actually just came up about involving the A10, um, asking will it fit and would it would it would the uh, the A10 can support four units. So with this, you could then in theory use four of these receivers in that unit for a total of eight channels. In theory, yes, and and uh, there are a, a plethora of not just the A10 but of the third party devices that can do things of that nature. Um, you know, this is not affiliated for sure, but I have a third party like um, this is made by Soundbag Dashboard, and this is just a piece of metal, a one RU kind of plate, if you will, and it has four slots. So if you wanted to, you could put four of these uh, in a rack with the appropriate backplate, whatever DB25 or the TA3F, uh, et cetera, and have either analog AES3 or DB25 out and have eight channels in one rack space. So um, it's really interesting to see what users are going to do with this product uh, as far as their custom type of setups and, and how they're actually going to use it in the field. Yeah. Nope. That makes sense. Um, one of the, uh, someone in the comments asked, uh, do bag users need to find a powering option for the 8610 if they want to control uh, transmitters remotely from a distance? That's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. So no, um, in the direct mode, the 8610 is not required because you have built-in show link right here. So uh, as I just demonstrated with the, the link there, it's the 8610 is not part of that process. Uh, basically this is built-in show link will remote control those transmitters uh, without any other devices or powering options or whatnot. If you, if you make a change on that receiver, it will change the transmitter and vice versa, um, which is, Pretty awesome. Like, uh, of course, yeah. Much actually, the the whole access point the eighty six ten is much larger than the uh, the other device, and yeah, you wouldn't want to be carrying this around. So yeah, that would be our direct mode, and uh, would would make that happen. One thing I didn't mention yet, and it's worth mentioning because we you know we kind of gloss over this a lot with Axiom Digital. And this this goes across all Axiom Digital transmitters. Is the fact that the body packs are pretty much self arranging. There's no uh, traditional gain control or level control as far as what you have to set for the microphone. So that means you basically put a fresh battery in, put the lavalier in, put it on the talent, and that's it. There's no kind of guessing where that level should be or mic checking and so forth. Uh, you're not going to clip the front end. Uh, it takes all the uh, all the guesswork out of it, and we don't really kind of emphasize that point enough, in my opinion, uh, about Axiom Digital. How just hands off it is. So you're on the episodic location. You got your bag rig. You basically put a lab here, put it on the talent, or maybe maybe that talent handler puts it on because they don't want you touching their a lister, etc. Then you know this is all set. You don't have to worry about that level. Uh, you have complete remote control via show link for frequencies and such. You just have to make sure that it has got a good battery in for you know, the time that you need to be shooting. And, and you're golden. So it's just you know, one less thing you have to worry about. Really cool technology. Great. Um, we got another question here, staying on the theme of um, you know just general operations. Um, are any of the features in uh, Showlink only limited to the United States? And would they be able to use the Sure Channels app in its place? Okay, great question. So, um, you know, the there is there is some limitations here uh, as far as the, the receiver goes, um, and it's kind of a twofold limitation. Uh, basically, the the legal ease is that you know sure makes different device variants depending on a variety of regional compliance, legal, and other considerations. Uh, the ADX five B US has FCC compliance approvals, making it approved to sell here in the US. Uh, the other units in Sure's portfolio for non-U.S. markets contain the appropriate regional approvals for their markets, um, and you can check with your local sales rep to determine which version is right for your region. Uh, with that being said, uh, yes, the U.S. version um, has a, kind of a two-tier limitation, um, and it's, it's definitely worth mentioning. Um, if you put the a DB backplate on the receiver, um, DB15 or DB25, right off the bat, you will not be able to take advantage of the automatic uh, interference detection and avoidance. So that means if you have a full blown Axiom digital rig with uh, you know, the spectrum manager and the workbench and all that stuff, 
uh, it will not change frequencies on its own automatically. And that would be the first restriction. Uh, the second restriction would be that if you slot uh, the ADX5D into a device um, that provides serial communication, um, like a portable recorder, for example, or a camera, and there's some sort of control or two-way negotiation there over the serial link, uh, you will also lose the show link functionality on the product. This does not apply to the TA3 backplate, but if you are using the DB25 and you're slotted into some sort of recording device, uh, it will uh, the US model will disable that functionality. That's great. Um, so, um, and these are all being asked by the same gentleman who must be, uh, you know, globe trotting around, uh, doing must, must be doing some reality TV on locations all over the globe. Keep it coming. Uh, because, uh, so why don't you really quickly just go over the frequency bands? Because I know they're very, very wide ranging. I mean, these things could work anywhere on earth. That's a great question. Yeah. So in the U.S., I mean, we have frequency bands worldwide, but the U.S. range, what we call G57 or G57 plus, covers all of the UHF spectrum from 470 up to 616. So G57 uh, takes care of 470 to 608, right up to the radio astronomy band. And then G57 plus, which is also compatible, takes advantage of all of that plus the little two megahertz above the radio astronomy band from 614 to 616. So there are some, a little bit of restrictions about what you can do in that two megahertz, but for all intents and purposes, it's 470 up to 616 with a hole for the radio astronomy band. What that means for the user in the US is that you don't have to worry about which range you have. All of the US Axiom digital transmitters work with all of the UHF Axiom digital receivers in that G57, G57 plus band. Uh, uh, and you will be able to find frequencies just about everywhere because it takes care of all of what's left to use in that uh, in that frequency range. So that's, right. uh, that, not, not only this product, but across the board with Axiom Digital, that's that's the deal. Yeah, because I see the bands here. There's the A that goes from 470 to 616. The B goes from 606 to 810. And then the C band goes from 941 to 960. So, you know, anybody is going to be you know, shooting, uh, you know, naked and afraid and, uh, you know, the Amazon rainforest. And then the, the next, you know, season is set in, you know, the Sahara desert, you know, you can go everywhere with pretty much minimal amounts of, of kit. Yes. That's the point. Um, so then the next question we have is, um, if two, uh, use, uh, if two of the receivers try to connect to the same transmitter, will is there any kind of hierarchy to prevent the conflict okay great question so i mean we had we have a couple different modes you can have it basically be encrypted or linked to just one transmitter and then therefore others can't pick it up unless you physically um you know infrared sync or more common in the especially reality tv usage is where you have uh, multiple recorders or multiple uh, receivers trying to catch the same transmitter and that can work as well so uh, you can either lock that out with twofold encryption if you want and or just making sure you sync uh, infrared sync only or you can uh, provide a, a way that everybody can listen to it in fact there are provisions inside where you can set a custom frequency group and flip through the different uh, transmitters in that group uh, and catch them quickly um, another application would be like sideline reporting with a camera uh, and there's multiple camera angles and they all have slot in receivers uh, you could use this type of uh, a scenario where you can, you know, multiple cameras can listen to the talent, even if they're not recording it, it's useful for them to hear what's going on uh, when you, when you get the camera and get the right situation and such. So yes, you can use it both ways. There's uh, restrictions if you want them to be there, including encryption AES-256, or you can let it open for anybody that with an Axiom digital uh, receiver to catch that signal, uh, your, your, your choice. Right. That makes sense. Um, staying on the encryption uh, topic here, um, and, and the synchronization topic. Uh, we have a question. Uh, someone asked if you could go a little bit deeper into uh, the show link. Um, how is it working on the 2.4 2 gig band? Um, like what channels and frequencies are going on there? That's a great question. And um, you, uh, without diving too deep in the rabbit hole, it uses the 2.4 gig spectrum and a technology called Zigbee, which is pretty popular with other uh, devices and originally was invented, I believe, for military use and whatnot. Uh, it operates and coexists on 2.4 where other devices, including Wi-Fi, 
exist, but not necessarily is Wi-Fi. It uses narrower channels and narrower bands uh, than the Wi-Fi, and it's self-navigating for the most part. So out of the box, the unit will automatically go to an open Zigbee channel, and if there's interference there or Wi-Fi is a problem, it will go to another channel. And again, Showlink is only carrying control data. It's not carrying audio or anything like that. It's mainly if you want to make a remote control change to that transmitter, you can do so with the ADX5D receiver or with the 8610 on the full blown access point. So um, the other advantage of it is that the Zigbee technology can take advantage of some of the Wi-Fi channels that are not being used in the US. So the higher ones like uh, above 11, like 13 and such. So um, there are usually no problem with the Zigbee and it can just work at you know, by itself. Um, if you really kind of want to get into the weeds with it, you can restrict uh, which channels it can hop to and utilize uh, using wireless workbench and a little bit uh, more of uh, kind of uh, the GUI and restricting it that way. But out of the box, it basically turn it on, it works. If there's interference, it goes to another frequency and uh, everything is cool. Uh, we worked really hard on the technology to make sure that there's never a point where uh, the transmitter and the receiver will get out of sync. If they do change to a new frequency, it's a very coordinated mistake proof step so that will never happen uh, so um, really cool stuff and again all you need with adx 5d to take advantage of that is an adx 5d with a built-in show link and an adx compatible transmitter it has to have an x in the part number for that to work makes sense um, we had a couple of questions involving actually can be folded into one question um, about uh, a plug-on transmitter for this thing. So if you want to review the, um, if you happen to have one of that handy in front of you, um, see, you always come prepared, Ben. So if you want to give like maybe like a 30 second uh, elevator pitch on the uh, on the ADX3, just to give a quick little thing about what it does and what it is. Sure, well, this is the AD3. Um, the AD3 here uh, is a plug-on transmitter. Uh, it's a two AA battery operation. Um, it's got kind of these gold wing sports car doors, if you will. Um, you can use it with a AA batteries or the rechargeable SB900 uh, battery. Uh, it has a unique locking connector. It provides uh, 48 or 24 volt phantom or no phantom if you want to light up uh, typical condenser microphones and um, shotgun microphones that do require it. Um, and uh, it's just part of the Axiom Digital Portfolio. So anything you can plug into here basically uh, will become a wireless microphone. If you wanna put this on do a podium mic or an SM58 or whatever you have lying around, it becomes wireless and can be caught by any other uh, Axiom Digital device, including the ADX 5D. So uh, it's something that we have in our portfolio now, uh, kind of a utility piece, but something very handy to have in your bag. Yeah, definitely in like the ENG and broadcast space. All day. Or, or doing anything where you have to quickly get something wireless. Um, the next question is, can multiple ADX 5Ds with standalone plates share scan data when they're allocating frequencies to multiple transmitters? Okay, great question. So um, not in the direct mode. So in direct mode, for example, you have two to four of these or however many in a bag and you do a scan, what you will do is you basically will turn everything off, turn on your first uh, receiver, do a scan, turn on your, tra uh, your transmitters and then leave those on and do the next one and the next one and the next one. Um, as these are digital technology, we don't have to worry about intermodulation and uh, making sure that we coordinate the whole thing as a group. We just have to be on open and clear frequencies. Now, if you are on a larger network, like the network mode, as we call it, and using the AD610 and the full-size Axiom digital rig, then yes, everything becomes part of the same network. And it's really cool. I did this by mistake the first time I had it, um, is that everything's on the network mode and you do a scan or a group scan right on the, the ADX5D. When I say deploy, it will go everywhere, including all the portables that are on the show link to the main access point and all the Axiom digital rack units will also get uh, the frequency information as well. So um, it can work in that instance, but if you're just using direct mode, there are basically whatever transmitters are paired to that receiver as a, just that container and they're compartmentalized that way at this time. Good question. Yeah. Great. Um, just going back to the plug on just for a very quick second. Um, I, I was actually misreading the, the answer. It was a two part, it was a twofold um, question about the AD3 is, is there going to be an ADX three where the show link is actually built in? Well, we're always working on new and exciting things. So I, I can't confirm or deny that at this time, but uh, you know, we're always looking towards the future. Your nuclear secrets are safe with us. Um, <laughs> on the product release side, 
um, is sure going to come up with any kind of um, mounting options for this up to or including like a one RU rack panel, not unlike what you saw. A That's a great ago. question. Uh, at this time, I, I don't believe uh, there's plans to, at, to with this launch to have any other accessories. You never know in the future there may be. Um, if there's something that you really envision that would be cool, please reach out to us and let us know. Um, you know, so we can kind of you know see that. I think the um, the idea for right now is that there's so many super slot compatible stuff out there that already exist in, in whatever forms, and uh, you know we don't need to really reinvent the wheel if it's going to be compatible with those type of devices. So um, at this time, uh, I have nothing to, to to show or demonstrate about um, you know a sure branded you know pack or you know quad mm -hmm. box or whatever it may be. Yeah, um, or maybe if you just want to review for the for the the attendees, um, if they are interested in something rack mountable, um, if it's going to be more like a stationary, like maybe like in studio broadcast or you know stuff is mounted in a rack or in a van or something like that, you want to just quickly go over the rack mount options that are available for Axiom Digital. Uh, sure. Well, we have the dual and the quad. So the typical 84D uh, is the dual, D for dual, and 84Q, which is uh, the quad receiver. Same 1RU chassis, just two and four channel respectively. Um, they are available, as I mentioned, with just a standard version and also the DC powered redundant power supply version, if you wish. Um, that's what I was mentioning earlier with uh, a lot of location sound recorders are using that right now on some very high level feature films. Um, and uh, that's kind of our existing portfolio. Of course, those are available in many different flavors and frequencies in the US, it's the A range, which would cover everything we can use here in the up to 616 and uh, megahertz. And uh, this rounds out, you know, another option. Uh, one thing we didn't mention is that, you know, this not only from a camera or location sound perspective is quite a cool product, but um, it can also be used as a utility piece. Like if you need to transmit high quality sound, uh, you know, outside at a restaurant or for a wedding or a delay tower on a large concert or something, you could put one of these receivers on your tower stack of speakers on a stick or stacks and racks, whatever it may be, and broadcast Axiom Digital, digital quality audio uh, to that receiver and have it be arguably a completely self-powered solution. So um, you can think of it that way as another kind of, you know, Swiss army knife, if you will, of, uh, of kind of uh, capabilities. Uh, absolutely. So hopefully for those of you on the video here that, you know, that's watching us, you know, haven't really seen the whole family of Axiom Digital, hopefully that'll give you an idea of how this is, you know, kind of fitting into this, uh, where this camera is now fitting into the whole family. Um, let's see, is there a bandwidth limit between the frequency of your first and second RF channels? Great question. So yeah, uh, thanks Bill for throwing in the chat, making sure you're on point here. Uh, so in standard mode, we could do 17 channels and one six megahertz uh, television station. That if you do the math, it's 350 kilohertz carrier to carrier to carrier. Uh, additionally, because it's digital, we don't really worry about the intermod because if it does make any, which it'll be below the noise floor. So we can put them back to back to back 350 kilohertz all day long uh, with that type of spacing and so forth. So uh, that's your normal 17 channels uh, per uh, per six megahertz TV station here in the US. Uh, if you need more channels than that, we do have a high density mode that can do up to 47 channels uh, in the same amount of space, um, of course. Um, but for the most part, I think most uh, users are gonna be using the standard mode. Yep, great. Um... What is the, uh, I'm trying to read the, what's, what's the, um, the pinout on the TA3? Um, is that a, like a standard? Oh, um, great, que great question. So yeah, the, TA, the TA3F plate um, that we have it basically can be either a balanced analog output or a AES3 output as well. So you have options there. Um, you can select that on the software menu and uh, out the back, you do have that capability. Um, to, while we're on the topic, as far as outputs and such, let me show you um, here on the receiver that I have, there's a couple of little, uh, there's a couple of little windows. So there's a, a cover here for the headphone output, right? And this is a 3.5 millimeter, but it is a, a 3.5 millimeter that can also be a headphone output. It can be uh, a monitoring for channel one, channel two, or a combination of both. It could also output balanced analog out and it can do AES3 out depending on what you want to do. So uh, this is really useful for um, going to a secondary uh, device or certain cameras that can't take two channels at the same time. Uh, you can route out this uh, from a balanced XLR into the auxiliary input of that camera. Um, additionally, on the other side here, we do have a, a USB-C 
And this USB-C here um, is not for powering the unit, it's for firmware updates and that sort of thing. So uh, USB-C will allow you to really easily update this using Sure Update Utility. And uh, you can also not only update that, but update the firmware uh, that resides on the transmitters. So um, those are the kind of the other auxiliary outputs. Without getting too deep in the weeds, we have other things like the talk switch and you know the user could push a button on the mic or a fob and then kick an audio out a different output. And there's all kinds of uh, other features, advanced stuff that this unit is capable of as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and the same customer asked, um, is the Lima wiring a standard for the, uh, I guess, for the packs? Yeah, it's, it's standard as far as the industry standard, the other manufacturers that are doing Lima, it's compatible with across the board, you know, as the, the usual suspects that you would, uh, that you'd think of. Yes. Excellent. Uh, let's see what else, if you would put, um, four of these into an A10, um, which I think is the, uh, that, that's that four unit one. Mm -hmm. um, does show link still work? Uh, because you said in a camera recorder, you would lose show link. Correct. So uh, again, just to reiterate, if you put the DB connector on the back, it will disable your automatic interference detection and avoidance. If you had a full size Axiom digital access point and spectrum manager, um, if there's serial communication going over those, uh, those DB uh, 25 or DB, you know, it would be DB 25 in this case, then yes, show link would be disabled. If it's plugged in and there is not serial communication going over, then you would not lose show link. Exactly. Okay. Let me see if there's any more of them here. Looks like we've got a lot of them going on here. Um, I mean, I can, I can offer some of the crowd here that these um, are shipping and we're getting our first uh, shipment, I think any day now coming up pretty soon, right? I believe these are starting to become available, Ben? That's right. So, I mean, as of any high, anticip highly anticipated product, um, as you know, it, it isn't gonna be in high demand in my opinion, and you should place your order with Dale as soon as possible uh, to, to get this going. Um, it is something that we've been planning for a summer launch and you know, we're on track for that. Uh, I do have some units here, of course, and uh, things are rolling. So get your orders in. Um, I guess might now might be a good time to talk a little bit about the price of the unit, which I, I believe is extremely palatable. Um, so as of right now, the, uh, the unit itself, the, the uh, ADX 5D is $2,500. So that's the, uh, the price there you can expect on the unit itself. Uh, it comes with no backplate. So as you can see, just like here, this is its raw type of uh, kind of usage, you will need to purchase a backplate in order to make it work. Uh, the TA3 uh, backplate, um, it will you know, be $200 and then the other backplates are 175. So with those two SKUs, you get yourself a fully capable, ready to slot in uh, type of receiver. Some other accessories you might be interested in. We do have a, a, a camera mount, like cold shoe plate, if you want to mount it on a mirrorless or DSLR camera. Uh, we have some cables that convert you know, TA3 to quarter inch. Oh, great. Perfect. Right on cue. Uh, so you can see some of the, the accessories there. We didn't really talk about the battery sled. We do have a battery sled available, uh, which I have right here. And on the picture, you can see uh, this guy takes your Sony NP style batteries uh, in various you know, heights and, and capacities. And it's a dual type of slot uh, tray. This guy will slot onto uh, the receiver itself, providing a way that you probably might already own some of these batteries and you can hot swap the batteries out if uh, one is depleted and the other one's still going so you don't have to lose your connection or you know typically as i think a lot of the viewers are interested in you can use like a, a battery distribution system in a bag you know, type location rig and uh, whatever flavor of battery you want with a bds and a Hirose four pin uh, using the uh, TA3F uh, backplate. So we do have options there, but you know, when you're, when you're talking to, to Eric or Dale or whoever, um, you know, make sure that you do get the uh, right accessories. You will need the ADX 5D and some kind of backplate, maybe a couple cables. And, and you know, I think you're, you're all pros at this stuff. So you, you kind of mm -hmm. see, but um, the initial reaction I got was like, uh, $2,500. And then, you know, about 175 for the 175 to 200 for a backplate. It's pretty palatable. Excellent. Yeah, we're getting some really good questions here from the viewers. Um, I just got another one. Um, can you go over what the signal path is um, for, for to broadcast audio to it with it? Uh, I'm trying to. Um, 
maybe clarify like what what, what do you mean the signal, uh, the the signal question, path? I'll, I'll reread the question what does the signal path look like to broadcast audio to the adx5 um well i mean essentially dsp going on probably in the transmitters there might right well, well, I mean, there's there's a lot of things going on. You know, it's a digital wireless system. You know, we basically, uh, it, it, you know, the real kind of uh, in a nutshell version is, you know, we have analog audio going into the pack. We have to convert it into digital. Uh, we have to modulate that somehow, transmit it through the air over RF, catch it with a receiver, demodulate that uh, modulation, and uh, therefore convert it, do its thing, and spit it out either digital AES-3 in this instance or uh, TA-3 uh, balanced uh, audio. And we all do this in... 1.9 milliseconds. So um, right. there's a lot of moving parts going on there, and, and honestly, some secret sauce to make it make it all work. So um, I'm not sure if that's good enough, or you kind of want to see the the signal flow of how it could work. But you know, you have your transmitters, and then you have your option on the on this particular receiver of either AES3 or balanced XLR out. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have. Um... Currently, there are ADX1, ADX1M, and ADX2 handheld transmitters, correct? Are we missing any in the whole family, just to round uh, it out? The one I can think is the ADX2FD, which is the top of the line uh, ADX2 show link right. remote controllable, but the FD means it can broadcast on two frequencies simultaneously right. uh, for ultimate reliability or ultimate range. That's uh, right. the top of the line. Other than that, yeah, I think you hit all the ADXs. There's three, uh, two ADX body packs and two ADX uh, handheld transmitters. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and then we have, um, how much distance can you get on the whip antennas? What's the operating range from transmitter to receiver? Just, you know, the regular analog, I mean, the RF signal, basically. Great question. I, and uh, this comes up quite a bit, uh, you know, just off the cuff, some of the testers that we've had, beta testers, were wondering about the same question. How does this compare to the full-size Axiom Digital uh, rack mount unit within, with external antennas and such? And uh, it's very, very close. In fact, uh, the testing we saw was pro in the neighborhood of like 90, 95% of the distance you could expect from like a standard, uh, you know, dual or quad rack mount unit with whips on it versus this product which was extremely interesting and palatable. Um, so I think, uh, you know, you're not really giving up a lot by moving to this form factor. And in fact, it's like a, a real feat of engineering to make all of this stuff in this tiny little package. I, I, I can't believe how they crammed it all in there. It's, uh, it's quite cool. Um, you know, as far as numbers, as dif distance goes, it really depends on your transmitter. I mean, a, a rough number is like 300 feet, but obviously that's usually uh, a lot more than that, to be honest. And you have various output powers all the way from 20 up to uh, 40 milliwatts, uh, and even higher with the, with the FD transmitter in digital. So, um, right. you know, there's no hard or fast rule saying it's only going to go 450 feet. Uh, in fact, it's, you know, a lot further than that usually. So. Right. Um, if you want to see Axion Digital's range, I believe it was Axion Digital sure has this awesome video at Soldier Field in Chicago where like some of your colleagues are like all across the stadium and the line and with line of sight. And it was just incredible. Yeah. Uh, Jen uh, was on that one. When I caught, when yeah, I caught she was. I remember, that's when I first, that's how I first became aware that. of her. She was very cold that day and a very cold day in Chicago, but the range was pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. Um, all right. We got two more questions here before we have to wrap it up. Uh, this one is, does this have modes to work with other transmitter brands, third party? Uh, no. It works with Axiom Digital and Axiom Digital only. It's not compatible with any other transmitter from the Sure or any other third-party brand. So it will work with Axiom Digital transmitters, period. Right. Um, and I guess I'll have to wrap this one up here as the last one. Do you ever have, do you ever see any need to, um, uh, you know, come out with something like, whoop? Sorry, Eric, let me clar let me clarify. There is okay. one that I forgot about. Thanks, Rick, for for keeping me on track here. Uh, there was the Q5X uh, player mic, the digital yes. player mics. Thank you. Those are a well. kind of a collaboration between Sure and Q5X. They will work with that because they speak Axiom Digital. Other than that, Sure Axiom Digital or Q5X player mic digital or any of the Q5X digital stuff will work. Great. Yeah, I'll go put those in the uh, I'll go put those into the, the the comments for the users. They can check them out. They're they're practically indestructible belt packs made by a Canadian company, Q5X, um, and they're great for sports, reality TV. If you got to go underwater or whatever. Yep. All right. Last but not least, um, do you ever see any need to make a transmitter with a built-in recorder? Is that anything Sure is looking at? 
Um, well, we're always looking at new and exciting stuff and, you know, we're always working on a new technology, but uh, I, you know, I have nothing to share at, the, at this time about that. It's an interesting concept and uh, I'm glad to see you're thinking about that and please keep any suggestions coming and we'd definitely like to listen. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I can't, I can't comment on anything coming up that may or may not. Have no problem at all. I, I just put the Q5X uh, Axiom Digital compatible models into the, uh, the comments of the thing. If you want to go check it out, everybody. Those are cool. Yeah. So yes, yeah, these are great. Um, you know, we've we're, we had a lot of experience with them even before that partnership. They make great products and they they work. They do very. They do what they do very well. Yeah. So I want to thank you, Ben, and our other friends from Sure on this line. Our friends from Peter E. Schmidt on the line here. Uh, we really appreciate all of you guys being here today. And uh, if you have any other questions, please give us a call. We're www.daleproaudio.com. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate it. It was fun.